Refraction and Snell's Law As we saw in EM waves, light slows when traveling through a medium. The index of refraction of the medium is the ratio of the speed of light in a vacuum to the speed of light in the medium, n equals c over v, where n is the index of refraction, c is the speed of light in the vacuum, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, and v is the speed of light in the material. Light also changes direction when it enters a new medium. This is called refraction. The angle of incidence is related to the angle of refraction. When the ray goes from less dense to more dense, it bends towards the normal line, and the refracted angle is smaller. And when the ray goes from more dense to less dense, it bends away from the normal line, and the refracted angle is larger. These angles and indices of refraction are related with Snell's law, which is n1 times sine theta1 equals n2 times sine theta2. An example you might see is a question asking about linear displacement. When light passes from air to a different medium back to air, the ray that enters the medium is parallel to the ray that exits the medium. Using geometry, we can find the linear displacement between the emerging ray and the incident ray if we know the angle of the incident ray and the thickness of the other medium. This is why objects look weird if they are partially underwater. Here it looks like the straw is bent. When a ray of light goes from a more dense medium to a less dense medium, if the angle is just big enough, the refracted ray will be parallel to the surface, so that the refracted angle will be 90 degrees. This angle is called the critical angle. You can find the critical angle by starting with Snell's law, n1 sine theta1 equals n2 sine theta2, and we're going to make theta2 equal to 90 degrees, and of course the sine of 90 is equal to 1. So therefore, the critical angle is equal to the inverse sine of n2 over n1. When the angle of incidence is larger than the critical angle, no light escapes the medium. This is called total internal reflection. So here we can see theta1 is less than the critical angle. So the refracted ray simply bends away from the normal line. Theta2 is equal to the critical angle. So the refracted ray is parallel to the surface. And theta3 is greater than the critical angle. And here we see total internal reflection. No light escapes the medium. Remember that light both reflects and refracts when hitting a surface. For example, let's see what happens to a ray of light as it goes from glass to water to air. The incident ray comes in from the glass to water. So the refracted ray bends away and the reflected ray is the same angle then that refracted ray also refracts as it goes from water to air, and the reflected ray here is also the same angle. Next, it refracts as it goes from water to glass, bending towards the normal, and of course it also reflects with the same angle as the incident.